Hello YouTube, my name is Trey, welcome to What Can I Change. Today we are going to be talking about the trans widow. This is gonna be a wonderful interview. Uh, but at first, if you want to like, subscribe, wanna check out the channel, hey, please do. If you don't have to watch this, that's cool too. We are working our way towards the soundboard, so if you wanna help out, you can donate right here. All the money obviously goes back. As you see, we have made improvements over here. We will continue to make improvements, thanks to you guys. This whole channel is crowdfunded, so, we appreciate you. All right. All right, guys. Let's get right into this. Now, this is a pretty uh, long interview, so just be prepared for that. Now, I'm going to pick and choose my places, but, you know, you'll get to, I'll tell you the whole interview, though, what was said. But this is this is something that a lot of people don't ever think about. Down the let, let me go ahead and get this started. DJ. The stuff that he tried to get me to do in the bedroom, that sexual abuse, trying to coerce me into being, acting like we're lesbians, him dressing up as a woman. In 2010, the kids were ordered and told they could no longer call their father dad. When we hear about transgenderism, which these days would appear to be all the time, it's almost always from the perspective of the transgender person, the person who feels that he is the opposite sex, what it means to be liberated from the shackles of oppression or whatever. Sometimes we hear about transgenderism from the perspective of a child. Though in that case, it's also often ostensibly from the perspective of a transgender person, the trans child who is coming to grips with his true identity and transitioning. There is one group of people whose perspective we never hear about when we talk about transgenderism, and that would be the women who are abandoned by their husbands, husbands who leave their families to pursue the transgender identity. I am joined by one such trans widow, Tracy Shannon. Tracy, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Tracy. All right, so that's just the intro. So we're gonna, I'm gonna, I am gonna skip ahead. You wanna watch the whole thing, you have to watch it on X. So just go to at Michael Knowles on X and you should be able to find it. Um, they didn't allow this video to go up on YouTube, so you can't find it there. So let's start at the eight minute mark. Let's see if you get it there. Now, everything played fine when I did this earlier. See, this is this is always happens to me, and then I got to get on camera and try to entertain y'all and, and make y'all make y'all happy. Watch this whole video earlier. No way. Push down the stairs. The stuff that he tried to. This was this was early golf. on. All right. Watch it while playing in our some marriage. Golf. We were married for a total of fifteen years. This was in the fourth year of our marriage. So at this time, she wrote the letter for him to transition. And he then got on hormone therapy and started to develop little breasts while we were married. I was told the reason for the breast development was that he was taking OCD medication to help him not want to cross dress. So I actually felt sorry for him that he was developing these breast buds that were embarrassing, that he would wear um, a t-shirt when we went to the public swimming pool with our kids. I mean, I felt sorry for him, and I was trying to just be a loving wife, and it affected things, you know. I feel very deceived that he was having this lesbian fantasy and growing these breasts while we were married and having intimate relations. I think that totally undermines the idea of consent hmm. that is so popularized by, you know, used by the left to onboard all these other things that um, that we don't agree to as Christians and conservatives, especially when they're talking about our kids. So, well, you know, all right, let's talk about that first part. So one thing that people don't seem to understand, right? Well, I guess people do understand it, but the things that aren't seen is with somebody, and we talked about this with uh, Mr. Beast, uh, his friend, uh, what was his name, Chris Tyson? Uh, and we talked about how it can be a very selfish act for to expect a family, a mother of three, 
and her husband to say, you know what, I'm going to be a woman now. And you just have to accept that. And you're going to hear the stuff that this husband did, which is going to really make you question a lot of things. But even after all that this man did, they are, we are told to just accept it. Let them live their best life. Let them be happy. I'll tell you again and again, when people decide to oh, go into this life and decide they just want to transition and just leave their family pretty much, or they expect the family to just do it, you can't tell me that's not selfish. You can't sit here and tell me that nobody's affected by what you do. It's about you being happy. That's what it's always about. The individual being happy, not the two boys that needed to be raised by a father. No, forget them. Forget them. It's about me being happy. You're going to see more of how this husband only pursues his happiness, but only gets praised for doing it. Oh, because they want to break up the family, no matter what. And the wife in this situation gets blamed for everything that I'm talking about, everything that happened. I want y'all to watch this because I want y'all to see that there's an other side to life. When somebody decides they're just going to transition or decide to do whatever their mind tells them to do because they get told to validate everything, I want y'all to see that there's other people in the picture. It's not always just about them, but the, everybody will tell us it's only about them and how they feel. But once again, we're starting to see a, a turn. All right, let's check it out. And remember, I want to tell you this. This all happened in 1999. This didn't happen a year ago. This happened in 1999. Before Bruce, uh, before, uh, what's her name? Caitlyn Jenner? Before Caitlyn Jenner became Caitlyn Jenner and he was still Bruce Jenner. So let's keep it moving. I'm going to move ahead a little bit here to another marker. The hard thing is making sure that these videos play for me. This man here. Now, obviously, we don't know his name. Doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to call, call, call him this man. Right. Uh, the, it is crazy stuff that, that, I'm, out, that I might have. And to Go be back. celebrated for doing it. Right. And in our case, you know, destroying the family, wrecking the marriage. We, we had to move out of our family home. And you had to move out. He didn't move out. We, we both ended up moving out, but he had an income. I was a stay-at-home mom for 10 years at that time, so I didn't have a job, and I had homeschooled my kids, so everything had to change for us. We, we were homeless, so I had to go live with my mom and dad in their house for a couple of years while I got on my feet financially because it took time, and the court only initially ordered him to pay $500 a month child support for three kids. So... I was trying to make it all come together, and you know, that's part of the father's role, man's role, provider. And uh, to think that now it's just okay that the state will tell you, you know, how much you'll provide, and, and other than that, you don't have to do anything because of the fetish that you wanted to indulge. It's just really insulting to the family, and that society actually thinks this is okay. They think this is okay because kids are supposedly really resilient. Oh, if I hear that phrase... If I never heard that phrase again in my life, it would be too soon. Because, you know, it's only ever used to justify child abuse. <laughs> it's only ever used to, yeah. oh, yes, d dad ran off, and, you know, the parents are fighting, and the kid is being trans, and his education is being neglected. Oh, don't worry. Kids are resilient. But well, they're not so resilient. It's had really hard um, consequences for my children. And I think if you looked at them, you'd think they're doing great, especially considering all the negative things that can happen to children of divorce and children in alternative type of families and everything they've been exposed to, which maybe we'll get into that. Um, but they look like they're doing fine, but it's been a long way. How old are they now? So they're all over 18 now. My uh, youngest with him is 19, and I have a 20-year-old and a 24-year-old. And so, but between the three of them, there have been six suicide attempts of different degrees of seriousness and one um, hospitalization in a mental health facility um, for a, a pretty good period of time for one. You see there? You see, once again, you don't ever see who's truly affected by all of this, right? Between the two boys and the girl, six times they tried to take their own lives. And you know who cares about that? Nobody. 
Because kids are resilient. Let me just take the wife out of this for a second. Let me talk about the kids. When it comes to children, why do you why do people think that the kids are supposed to be thrown into these adult situations and be able to handle them perfectly? A kid who had a loving father, well, I wouldn't say loving father in this case, but a child, a young man, a young girl have a father who not only transitions, but transitions in a multitude of ways. Meaning they get they got longer hair, they started they started wearing fake breasts. And they started talking different. And not only that, as you'll find out here later, they went on to somebody else who was also trans. They went on to a woman who had a beard and was losing her hair. And you'll see that this, this individual was awful too. And the kids are just supposed to just adjust to that. They're just supposed to be like, oh yeah. I mean, yeah, my father was here and now he's a woman. Yep, perfectly normal. And the kids are just so resilient. This is back in 1999, people, when this all started. Why, why can't we ever let kids be kids anymore? We, it sucks to be a child now because they get thrust into all of these adult situations now. You can't even go to a school without, oh, here we got to go. Here's the pride flags. You got to make a decision. Oh, what are you going to do? Are you going to be, are you going to be for the pride? Are you going to be against the pride? Are you going to be for the trans? against the trans. I know you're only 10, but today's the day to make that choice. And remember, if you make the wrong choice, oh, it's going to come with bullying. The teachers may bully you, which we'll talk about eventually. Nobody's on your side. At a kid, at 10 year old, you might as well be an activist at 10 years old. It's crazy. We can't let the kids do anything because us adults, because it's not that us adults can't handle having the discussion. It says that certain people want to control every narrative they possibly can. So when we do try to have the discussion, they decide to pull the kids in to get some weird validation from it. This father was trying to get valid. Y'all gotta have to keep listening, but this father is gonna try to get validation from his children from him transitioning. Their father. I don't, I'll never know when kids are just gonna be able to live their life without having to be activists at eight years old. They have to make that quick of a decision. But we just can't leave them alone. And I'm not even talking, I'm not talking about trans kids. Done. I'm talking about even in this situation, when it's between a family, the father wanted the kids to, y'all are going to see. Let's continue. Of course, let me, before we do that again, I'm just going to go ahead and do the whole refresh because that's what I have to keep doing here. So Being please forgive the me. Stairs. The stuff that he tried to get me to do. If y'all keep hearing that beginning. But let's move forward here a little bit. For some reason, guys, it doesn't play unless I'm playing the video and then I move to the section I'm trying to. Weird. Don't know. Don't care. Being pushed down the stairs. This All right. Say you hear what she said? We have a I know you heard that part. Right? We'll talk about that. Let's part of that is because um, the financially, she can get what she wants from him. Hmm. Yeah. Right. Okay. So they've got these different degrees of relationship now as adults, but... At the time, your ex-husband is involved with someone else, and you said has a lover that he's bringing around. Mm -hmm. And this person, I assume, is in the community. Oh yeah, as an well. activist in the community as well, like a like a leading activist in the state of Texas. So this is a man, or this is a woman? It's a woman that oh, um, has a beard and is, has male pattern hair loss and it's fat and um, you know not very attractive and uh, that's that's who he left to be with when he initially left uh, that really did make me feel <laughs> really bad about myself um, when that happened uh, but this was a woman who had her breast amputated and when she did she walked around in front of my kids with her shirt off showing the, the scars and she would give herself shots of testosterone in front of the kids. And she also asked the kids to help her with those shots, but they did not do that. So um, yeah, she also threatened to punish them and they would get spankings if they misgendered uh, my 
ex-husband, their father. They would be spanked by your ex-husband, I guess, with his whatever. That was a threat. And they, they would be threatened with spankings if they called their father him and her. It is just so, so unjust. It's just so unjust. And you've got to just sit idly by and watch this happen because the courts are telling you to do it and the, and the counselor that you met with was, was encouraging all of this. So I, I sort of cut you off. You said this started four years into your marriage. Mm-hmm. You're married for a total of 15 years, you said. How does it, how do you get from four to 15? There were instances of cross-dressing in there. Um, then there were times that I thought nothing was happening and I thought everything was fine. Of course, he was taking the hormones behind my back. I, I did wonder, as a woman, why we lacked um, sexual intimacy in our marriage a lot of times. And my answer to that I eventually would come at the end of our marriage when I would find out he was secretly on those hormones and that lowered his libido. And so when he wanted to have another baby with me, then he would stop taking the hormones long enough so that he could get me pregnant and, you know, and so we could have sexual relations. In fact, that's not just me guessing. I read about that in numerous messages between him and another lover he had met online while we were still married. So I someone ass- before that one. I assume the hormones don't just affect the... A lover that he had... Now, keep all that in mind. Keep all of that in mind because this man would go on to tell this woman that the reason he transitioned because she didn't give him enough chances. And this is uh, not chances about cheating and the infidelity. Chances to not transition, to not cross-dress. He's saying that she should have just stuck around through all of that no matter what. When the kids are being affected, you're obviously talking to other people. And I don't have this part in here, but I'll tell you now. This man had pictures of other men cross-dressing on his computer. The man was obviously going through a lot, but nobody would say that he, he's mentally got something going on. No, not at all. Another part I didn't show you guys is that at one point when his wife was pregnant, he ended up putting on a pregnant belly, a fake one. A fake pregnant belly for no reason at all. This was with their third child. To say that he wanted to feel her pain. (sighs) This man was off. This man was mentally going through it. But because it was targeted, because the word trans was put on there, completely didn't care. Everybody behind him. Because people weren't walking up to this woman and saying, oh, you know, man, that sucks. And they weren't going up to her and be like, man, I'm sorry that happened to your children. No, what they were doing to this woman is going up to her and saying, well, what did you do wrong? Why didn't you just let him be happy? He is mentally ill. Can you not tell that? This person is looking at other men cross-dressing on his, on his computer. Not only that, himself he's cross-dressing. He's putting on fake pregnant bellies. And y'all are going to see more stuff that he did. But nobody cares because he was trans. That's my issue in this story. Nobody cares that what he was doing to his family, but it's because he was trans. And because he transitioned, everything just became normal. Is that what y'all think happens in this story? No. Let's continue. Let's continue. Here's the stuff that he tried to get me to do. Which right. up. He still kept pressuring me. I need that. And I'm going to help you. I'm going to do all your chores for you. Like I had these assigned chores. <laughs> and he, I'm going to do all the housekeeping. You just rest. And and he was buzzing around very happy in that thing he that he made. This is the pregnant belly. And I finally just told him, I just feel like you're cross-dressing and it's making me really uncomfortable. So I wish you wouldn't do that anymore. And he wasn't willing to give it up. He still kept pressuring me. I need to do this so I can understand you. Just relax. I'm going to um, take all 
take care of everything, take care of all your responsibilities around here. You can just put your feet up. So my son, who was very disturbed by this, actually went and destroyed that thing with a pair of scissors. Good on Drug it. Drug it out of the right. drawer and, right. and destroyed it because it bothered him seeing his dad like that. So you can only imagine how it felt when he was a six years older, his dad decides he's going to become a woman, and he goes and gets giant breast implants and a nose job and grows his hair out long, and he's hanging his bras all around his trashy apartment for my son to see. And whenever he would hug my son, he'd rub his breast up against him. People don't think about what this is like for the boys. They don't think about what that's like at all. I mean, dads have a certain feeling when you give them a hug. And now their dad was soft and his enormous breasts would rub up against them. And that made them really uncomfortable. Nobody thinks about that. Hmm? Nobody thinks about the kids once again. Can you imagine your father walking up to you with fake breasts and rolling up to you and hugging you and rubbing those fake breasts all up against you? Leaving bras all over the house in this trashy house. Remember, he's with, at this point, he's with a bearded woman who's fat, hair loss, and walks around with their shirt off to show their, uh, breasts, the breasts that they had removed. That's what we're showing the child. That's that's normal living for these kids, and we just accept it. Like, oh, you know, they're just, they're happy. These do these not sound like creeps? I'm sorry, these don't sound like creeps to you. But even then, and I didn't show this part either. Even then, they these boys, the the boys and the girl, they were court ordered, court ordered to call their dad anything but that so they couldn't call him father they had to call him something whatever they came up with is never explained here but they couldn't say dad and they dang sure probably weren't going to say mom so what they had to call him i don't know but that's what i'm saying you're making these kids go through all of this while they're children they can't even call their dad dad that they grew up calling dad they now have to call him hey you because they're not going to be able to say him. That doesn't make any sense when you're talking to an individual. So why do they call him? <sighs> and what did they have to call the woman, the stepmom here? Dad? You see what I'm saying? You see how confusing that all is? I'll be confused as heck. The, the woman who's not my mother, my stepmom now, I got to call her dad or stepfather or Brian. And I got to call my dad anything but dad. I got to call him Katie. I got to call him Sarah. I don't know what they have to call their father, but kids are resilient, right? It, it, no, the only person who's bad in this whole situation is the mom who's against this. Just accept it. Right, Chris? We just accept it. Because I know how y'all felt when I talked about Chris Tyson and I tried to explain it to you. This is the kind of stuff that you would go through as a child. He had kids. He just had a kid. Has a wife. But y'all want to defend Chris. Because he's happy now. But this is the stuff I'm trying to tell you. The other people on the other side, do y'all even care or think about them? No, you don't. You always look at one side. Why? This is this, And this is just a little bit off a little bit, but this is the same thing I have when I tell you about people and I know this is going to sound like a way off, but I just trying to make sense of it all. Just stick with me. This is the same thing I told you about when I told you about the girl who was dancing in Target. It called the man racist who was doing his job. It's it's crazy to me that everybody sees everybody in their own world. As just a stand by, just a bystander, no matter what this like, if, what, no matter what decision I made, if I did something heinous right now, well, let's just say I went out right now and cheated on my wife. Because I was unhappy, right? Just felt like I had to get my rocks off. My wife's sitting here at home crying every single day, heartbroken. And I'm just like, you got to get over it. <laughs> you got to get over it. That's what Pearl Davis would tell you. I'm on it right now. That's what these people tell us. They just want us to treat everybody like they don't matter in our lives. And everybody's cool with it. Everybody's like, oh, as long as they're happy until it happens to you. Until it's in your life. And then you're not so happy about it now, are you? You got to start thinking about the other people. 
Let's continue. <clears throat> Once again, sorry you guys have to keep here in the beginning. It is what it is. Here. Gotta live with it. Alright. Let's continue on to another part here. Lead y'all into it. Yeah, sexual things that he wanted. And so, you know, what happened in those 14 years? I told you about the pregnancy belly. There was a time in those, no, not 14, those 11 years that he, after the birth of our first daughter, she wouldn't take a bottle. So I was very stressed out with like, I can't even leave the house for more than an hour and a half because she has to have, a, uh, she has to be breastfed. Um, so he offered to breastfeed her. Yeah. How do you plan on doing that? That's what I wondered at the time. I, I wondered, like, how could you, of course I was not on board with that. Yeah. that. That's absurd. And he kept bringing it up, like pressuring me. I said, no, he said, yeah, I, I can help you. I said, it was always, I'm helping you, and I'm trying to understand you. I'm trying to give you a break. I said, no, don't ever bring it up again. He yeah. had sent me articles on how men in third world countries were able to lactate and, to, and I'm like, we're not desperate. You know, I'll just, I'll just breastfeed until she's done breastfeeding. It's a short phase of life, you right. know. But men can, especially if they're pumped with all these chemicals and poisons and things that the modern pro-trans movement pushes, they, they can produce something. Men have mammary glands, so they can produce mm -hmm. something. This is in no way established as safe by the FDA or anything like that. I mean, they, no one knows what this means for the babies, but some men who have gone really far down this rabbit hole with enough, enough shots in them w will be able to produce something. Uh, this is, I can't imagine, the best for the baby. Certainly not the best for your marriage or for anyone's <laughs> flourishing. And so you look at them and you say, uh, no thanks, I'm good, yeah, we'll figure like, it out. Don't bring it up again or I'm divorcing you. That's yeah. what I told him. I don't even know how I stayed after we even brought that up. But people need to understand that trans widows uh, when we're in those relationships, we're dealing with narcissism. Sure. We're very gaslighted. Most of us have experienced different forms of abuse, whether it be physical, sexual, emotional, and financial, usually all four of those. So that's why we stay through these absurdities and atrocities. And you know, and because you're trying to make it work. Definitely. I mean, the, to me, divorce is hard enough on children. It definitely has consequences that society doesn't want to talk about anymore since we've normalized the destruction of family. But I also didn't want my kids to be alone with someone who's this unhinged. So I thought I could maybe can control this because he loved me and I loved him and we cared about these kids that we could somehow keep it in, in balance and keep things from derailing. But, uh, I just didn't have that kind of control. You know, there's the internet where he found all this stuff on. I'm sure I didn't know anything about these types of fetishes, especially regarding um, men breastfeeding. And that is a form of fetish. Yeah. And now I'm convinced for him it was too. And, of course. And he was trying to have that experience with our daughter. And that yeah. should have been considered in the custody. I mean, we used to protect children. Yeah. We used to protect family and honor the truth. And we had some type of way in society of just keeping social norms. But by the time I had gone to court in 2010, that that wasn't the case. I mean, before that, a man doing what he was doing, I was in a support group for women whose husbands cross-dressed. It was for Christian women. And only two of those women had their husbands transitioned. And none of the women who were divorced in that support group. None of their women share custody with their ex. Yeah. None. This was a landmark case in Texas when he got shared custody of the kids. And that's because things had evolved to such a point in our society that now, and this was a Republican judge too, by the way, now we're not protecting the kids. We're being apathetic. We're saying like, pretending like it doesn't matter. But at this point, in 2023, it's even worse no because one. if I don't validate that stuff, if I don't agree with it and teach it, I'm the one who's going to lose my kids. Right. But in fact, even in 2010, I was asked in court, how will you, as a Christian conservative woman, how are you going to co-parent with this you know, lovely trans woman over here? 
not only is transgenderism accepted as true, an absurd ideology is not... I'm going to let it roll here for a little bit, but I just want to interject right quickly. That part that you just heard at the end, that's what I'm talking about. How are you going to deal with this individual? How are you going to do all this? What do you mean me? He's the pro person with the problem. Why do I have to conform to everything he's doing? I just don't get it. Hold on. Let me take my glasses off before I say this. That's, that's a quote from a song. I, I get the purpose. Like, I understand why they want to push trans. I get it. I, I mean, I completely understand why they are doing it. It's, a, it's an act of a control. I'm not stupid. I get that part. My, my thing is, it's just sometimes so hard to comprehend, though. You know, like, I understand it. But to wrap my mind and to fully be able to be like, okay, this is a real battle that we're actually going to have to have for the next few years. We have to have it. And it sounds so silly because I feel like there's so much more going on. But I think at this point, and I know some people may also think this, that we shouldn't have this discussion. It's just silly to have. We can't anymore. We can't just ignore it. I think that's what's got us here before. In fact, back in 1999, when all this started, no, she was still getting gaslighted. Nobody cared. I think at this point, we just have to fight it as seriously as possible. Now, the, the argument we get now is because we take it so seriously is why are you so obsessed? Why do you care so much about them? That's the question we were asking this before when it came to trans people. Why do y'all need this so much? Why do y'all need to go in the bathroom so much? When Target first did it back in like, what was it, 2014? I think it was somewhere around there, like 2014, 2016, somewhere in that area. When Target first started doing this, letting trans people in the bathrooms, they were like the first store I ever remember saying it was okay. It was at that point that we should have started talking. <clears throat> but you know what we did? What we did was ignore it. We just said, oh, we just want to go to Target. Didn't, didn't discuss it. I didn't hear it at no. I didn't hear it on the internet. Nothing. But now we had no choice but to discuss it because they got to the who? The children. They were getting to the children then, but we didn't think it would get this serious. <sighs> So when you guys see me go hard on this and you see me get passionate or you see me get really upset, it's not because I hate trans people. It's because I hate the ideology that comes with it. I hate everybody that it hurts in the process, including the person who is thinking they want to be trans. I hate that part of it. That part, I will admit, I hate that part of all the people who get hurt and all the people who don't care. I'm not just talking about the uh, the citizenship. I'm talking about the people at the top who got all this going. I can't stand what they're doing to people. It's like we're freaking hamsters in a wheel. They're just doing whatever they want and experimenting on whatever we want. And they're seeing what happens. I just hate that we get played like freaking rats in a race and people are dying and people, people are doing things that they cannot reverse and people are literally harming themselves and mutilating themselves and thinking it's okay. We have really warped enough to tell people that this is okay. We're just getting played. And I just hate watching all these people's lives get destroyed. And we still don't even have the full aftermath of what's going to happen. Because when we see, if it ever gets to the point where we do see it start happening to kids, because we know it does. And we see what happens to these kids when they grow up and they're completely unhinged. You're going to have more people who are unhinged, more people who are unhinged. More people who are unhinged. And then we're going to see all this stuff happening to families. We're going to start seeing all this stuff happening to friends. We're going to start seeing this happening to just people who don't even know any of these individuals. They're going to get cracked. Because these people are going to snap. Because if we were to allow this to go on without any repercussion, we just say, oh, yeah, let them all have surgeries. These people are going to snap when they realize what society has done to them. But we're all just running this dumb race arguing about these dumb things but we have to now and i don't even want to say they're dumb anymore they're serious because it may have just started with hey i'm a woman but once the surgeries start and once people start mutilating themselves and once families start getting ripped apart and once kids start falling into depression and more people start taking their lives and then they're trying to control us and tell us that the pride flag is the flag of america and they're trying to do everything in their power to make sure that every family's broken up they try to do everything in their power to make sure that nobody is trying to have safe sex. They're trying to get to the point where they're 
taking as many babies' lives as they can. They'll do anything and everything in their power to make sure that we are controlled minions. And who, and it sounds so silly. If you're at the top, it, it's not that big a deal. If you're at the top just looking down on us average people, it's cool. Who cares who dies? We're going to see how this plays out. But for us people who truly have to deal with it, the people I have to look in the eyes, the people you have to look in the eyes and see the hurt and the pain, you realize this is real reality for us. And it seems as if people can't see that when they go to these, when they see the thing that happened in Austin, Texas, when women are just trying to say, can we be women? And you got people out there just yelling and screaming in their face and saying that they don't matter. Fuck you is what they tell us. Fuck you. You want to be a woman and want to live your life and be safe in the locker rooms? Fuck you. You want to go in there and have your little daughter go in there and be safe and not see a naked man in there? Fuck you. Oh, you want to be married to somebody, have uh, have a husband and kids? Oh, but they want to transition, do all this other stuff, but it's your fault at the end of the day? And you're, you're broken, you're heartbroken, your kids no longer have a father? Guess what? Fuck you. You. Oh, wait, we're going to have all these kids out here. They're going to go. They're going to say that they transition because they watch some TikTok video. And now they got both their breasts removed, got their uterus moved, can't have kids, never going to be able to have kids. Now it's completely irreversible. And now here they're sitting here at 18. Like, what did I do to myself? I look at myself in the mirror and I feel like a monster. You know what they say to us when we even bring up these concerns? Fuck you. That's all we get. We don't get a discussion. We don't get a talk. We just get fuck you. And you're concerned for anybody but us. Because we're the only people who are depressed. We're the only people who go through anything. We're the only people who look in the mirror and hate ourselves. We're the only people in the world that go through anything on this planet. It's because I'm trans, you're not. So guess what? Fuck you. And I'm sick of that. That's all I'm saying. Damn, can we have a conversation? I mean, dang. I'm just tired of every time I bring it up, it's just fuck you. No, guess what? Let's continue. We got one last part. We got to go over here. Let me redo this again. All right, let me. By everything. I want to. We're divorced. Your, your husband, you find that he's getting into all this kind of weird porn stuff. He is, as you, I mean, it's a hideous, it's a, like a horrifying way to put it, but he, he would have been using your daughter as an instrument for his sexual gratification had you allowed this breastfeeding insanity to go on. He was already wearing items of her, like um, some of her accessories her like bows. I mean, this was a ba this is a baby girl. When we were divorced, she was five years old. He was already wearing items of her clothing. I couldn't stay and let him violate her the way that I had been violated. Right. You know, putting on clothes out of my closet and realizing they're stretched out. Realizing my high heel boots are stretched out and my panties stretched out because he had been in them. I, I guess. And, and that's where uh, you, you can go ahead and watch the rest of the interview after that. I wanted y'all to hear that last part. And I'm going to explain more that what happened in there. But y'all hear what, he, what she said? That he was wearing his daughter's clothes and stretching them out. And she had to hide that from her kids. Her daughter. She had to hide that from their daughter. The father was trying on the girl, the little baby girl's clothes. And they're trying on her panties, trying on her everything. And everybody's supposed to be just cool. Instead of getting this man help, we just have to accept it. You see what I'm saying? Instead of going, what's going on? You're trying on little girl clothes. You're a grown man trying on little girl's clothes that you know you can't fit. And we're supposed to be like, oh, it's cool. <laughs> it's all good, baby. Let, let, let him be happy. What the heck comes with him being happy? Like, what... Think about that. If this man is fully happy, what comes with that? A broken family? What comes with that? If she, imagine this marriage is still going on. What would come of him just being happy? He would just go into trying on his, his little girl's clothes. He wanted to breastfeed his own little daughter. And we know that can be a fetish as well. 
If he's supposed to just accept that, what's he going to do next? Take take showers with his own kid? Is he going to take showers with other kids? Like, what? at what point would you draw the line of, hey, he's happy, though? So let's, uh, um, let's talk about, um, somebody has said that this kind of stuff doesn't happen. You guys need to read. I mean, it doesn't even take much of a search. There's literally a woman who talks about it all the time. Her name is Chloe. Go find her on X. She talks about it all the time because she had a, we, uh, she had a double, uh, double mastectomy when she was a child. Do we not see the, do y'all not remember Jasmine from the TV show back in the day? The little girl, I mean, the little boy who transitioned to a girl. It was on TV. What do you mean? It doesn't happen. It was on TV for all of us to see. I forgot the name of the show. But there was another M- MTV show that did the exact same thing. And the little girl transitioned on TV right in front of us. Hold on. Milo. Milo. MTV. There was a person named Milo. It was transitioning on TV. We all saw it. Milo has come out and said it. Uh. Uh, she regrets it. And everything that happened with that. I, I actually made a video about that not too long ago. So y'all go check it out. It's Milo Winslow, I believe. So you can go check that out. It may not be Milo Winslow. Just look up Milo. You can just research it. And then we had that other, uh, I think the girl's name was Jasmine. The little boy, he became a girl. So it does happen all the time right in front of us. But back then, you know what's funny? Was when we were watching it back then, we were looking at it going, Oh, that's so wonderful. I'm glad that he gets to be a girl now and he gets to be who he wants to be. And then the kids come out and say, man, I effing hate this. People don't, adults seem to think that they can't project themselves on the kids. You can absolutely influence a kid easily. To think that it's like the hardest thing on the planet to just get them to turn in the direction you want to. You absolutely can. Because we were all doing it. We were telling Milo back then, Greg, good job. You're changing. You're becoming happy. This is exactly what you want. We know what you want. And when you get older, you're not going to have any regrets. This is exactly what Milo wants. Milo turns 19 years old and regrets it all. And guess what? Guess who can't go back? Milo. You get to go live your normal life now. You get to go on, maybe have kids, maybe have a family. Do all the wonderful stuff. Not Milo. Milo still has to go get follow-ups. Milo still can't breastfeed. Milo still can't do these things. Milo still can't have kids. Nope. Nobody cares about Milo now. Milo, to the side. (laughs) He gone. We not talking about Milo no more. We, we, We talking about other stuff now. Let's talk about these other kids who know exactly what they want in this life. And let them move forward. And let them do whatever they want to do. So let's go back to the trans widow for a second. Her life was obviously destroyed. She was a housewife, no money. Father did not care. $500 a month for three kids. All because he decided he wanted to transition. It's not like he like fought it. It's not like he was trying. He was literally cross-dressing right there. Breast, wanted to breastfeed the child. The mom was scared to even leave her kids with him because of the stuff he was doing. He was hooking up with other lovers who also cross-dressed. Ended up getting with the person. And here's a story I didn't tell y'all. That's in this thing. This this individual. The husband who left the mom, right? Got with that woman who had a beard, belly, fat, hair loss. You know what that individual ended up doing? Threatening to kill the kids. That individual that y'all said was going to be so happy. He married a woman who wanted to be a man and that individual that this husband married threatened to not only kill the kids, but threatened to kill the wife too. So bad that eventually they had to get a court order to have them, to have that individual separated from their life. Good job though. I'm I'm so glad he's happy though. I'm so glad he picked another unhinged person that wanted to take the life of not only his kids, but also his wife. And you know what the response was that to what 
to that was? Do you think the husband was like, oh, no, please don't do that? No, the, mo- the, the woman here, she found the messages of when her life got threatened. You know what happened? He laughed. He laughed. <laughs> he responded with LOL. He didn't respond with, oh, you're crazy. Don't ever text me again. Block. Nope. <laughs> he laughed at the thought of his wife getting her life taken by another unhinged individual. But everybody was saying that he's a transition, right? He should be as happy as possible. No, no matter if your kids are getting threatened to have their life taken or the wife, let's just all be happy. Kumbaya. But it's so instead of dealing with that mental illness to the point where he was okay with his wife being having his, her life taken, instead of dealing with that and all the gender dysphoria that was going on clearly, and that also turned into somewhat of a fetish, according to the wife, instead of dealing with all of that, we didn't. The court had it. The court could have done something. They didn't. The community could have did something. They didn't. Friends, family could have did something. Didn't. Why? Because they were too scared of getting canceled. They were too scared of what might happen if they're like, uh, I don't know. This person seems kind of off. They, they instead of caring about this man, instead of about caring about his mental health that was obviously deteriorating to the point where he wanted his wife to have her life taken, and didn't care about the kids either. The woman, the person that he married was said he would take the life of the kids and he still didn't care still didn't care so instead of helping this man or doing something for this man we just let them cross dress we just let them get fake breasts we let them say hey i'll breastfeed your kid we just let them put on their baby girl's clothes we just let it all just happen because you know why trans that's all he had to do that's all he had to say was oh i'm trans (laughs) bam done we're not even going to talk about it Hey, but what? I, I think he might. Nope, he's trans. Leave him alone. I'm just saying. I mean, he did want to breastfeed. He's trans. Leave him alone. I mean, we can't even have a discussion. No. No. And then we'd be really looking stupid if that if they had gone through with it. If the kids got their life taken, we'd really be looking dumb. Then we'd be saying, "I can't believe that we didn't." Then we'd be looking silly. What does it take for you guys to understand? Now, I understand some people who come out trans, they're just following the trends. They get on their little TikTok and think it's cool. Okay. But when are we going to start helping the people who are really dealing with the gender dysphoria? When are we just going to stop, stop caring for them and just say, oh, just trans? Let's not even have a conversation anymore. Done. That's, that's love, though. Y'all got it. <laughs> love is love. <laughs> y'all got it y'all are doing a great job showing so many people so much love to where y'all can't even talk to them and tell them maybe they shouldn't have their breasts removed but y'all got it wait don't have your uterus removed you might not be able to have kids nope you got it you know what instead of keeping your male genitals we're gonna cut them off to where you may have possible well, actually you're gonna have complications for the rest of your life they even tell you the doctor tell you Well, the doctors don't tell you. I'm saying the doctors come out and say this. Oh, we're going to make money off these people for the rest of their lives because they're going to have to keep coming back. You got to dilate the rest of your life. This is a lifelong decision. It will never stop. No matter if you decide one day, maybe this wasn't for me and you actually got some help. Doesn't matter. Too late. Love is love. It's still a small part of the population that deals with being trans. It's still like 1%, 2%. That number will rise to 5, 10. What if it's 20, 30? That'd be exponential, but you think it's impossible? So you can hate. You can say I'm this. You say I hate trans people. You can say I hate the LGB. I don't care what you think. Listen, that's that's the beautiful thing about my life. I wasn't made on this internet. I'm a grown man. Lived plenty of life. Never been on this camera. I said this in my real life. I say this on camera. I don't give a F. Because I care about people too much to let this stuff slide. I don't believe these people are living in their true happiness. I believe they've been manipulated. Some of them do deal with gender dysphoria, but that doesn't mean we ignore it. I mean, we just say, oh, okay, we'll be trans then. Nope, not me. I'm going to love and I will die on this hill, truly loving y'all and trying to get y'all the true help 
that y'all can do. Not a lot of charities out there, not a lot of places to give money, but I think sure give my time. Now there's a lot of places you give money to do this stuff. Not a lot of places want to come out because they get canceled immediately and they never get funded. <sighs> but maybe we can start showing these people true love. Maybe we can start caring about these individuals. Because I'll say this one more time. It's not us versus them. I'm against the ideology, not the people. I'm against the ideology, not the people. They're human beings, just like I am. And that's why I refuse to let these people tell y'all to mutilate yourselves. That's why I refuse to let these people slap a label on you and tell us and tell us to just go on about our day. I refuse to let y'all just say fuck you to everybody who is against anything y'all say. And who is they? Not the trans people. <laughs> y'all know who they is. It's the people. You can't see them. There's always somebody behind the scenes. I'm not an elite. I'm not wealthy. I'm not a billionaire. I can't see these people. But there's somebody at the top controlling all this. Well, there's a group of people at the top of church controlling all this. They want to experiment on us to see what will happen if we just keep feeding them the lie. And then it'll make billions off of these kind of people. We got to stand up. We can't just be rats. We can't just be hamsters for them to keep experimenting on us and see what happens. Real people are dying. Real people are going through true mental issues. Real families are being torn apart. Real kids are being put in danger. Why can't we just talk? That's all we're asking. Not yell in my face. Not kill me F you. Not threaten you're going to beat me up. Come to my house. Take my family's life. Can we just have a discussion before you go unhinged on me? That's all I'm asking. Shout out to my canoles in this interview and the trans widow. I appreciate you guys. Bye.